Hi. Um, this is in a way a second video about the cocoon. In the first video I explained that the cocoon is a structure, um, relatively a deeper layer within our aura, and the feminine side of the cocoon it gives us our purpose. It tells us how we respond to our environment and therefore what role we play in our environment because we are reacting in a very specific way and giving very specific impulses to our environment. I want to go a little bit more in depth in this video and now look at the masculine side of the cocoon. So while the feminine side is about um, you could say the why of our existence, the masculine side is in a way the more practical side of how we do it. And there are various levels of, uh, of skill, you could say, in, um, in working. The most um, simple structure is also called the, the scout structure. So um, this means that the person is able to find the correct energy, but not yet to use it. So, um, the person who has, for instance, a mission as a healer or a critic or an inspirer or a leader will be able to find the impulse, but not be able to use it. So, for instance, if the person is trying to lead, they will yeah, be able to find the right book or um, the right project, but they cannot really manifest themselves as a leader. The same if a person is a healer, they might be able to find the correct energy, but not be able to use it themselves. So, for instance, a more advanced healer could yeah, manipulate the energy and heal with their hands, but a more beginning healer would, for instance, know, like, okay, you need this plant, this stone, this crystal, this oil, because it has exactly the energy you need. So this is typical scout level, the first level of, uh, of skill. Now, the second level of skill is a person who is, in a way, um, showing much more structure within the cocoon. So, a scout level person has a relatively unstructured uh, cocoon. And the second level is in a way showing that the energy has, is making little vortices, has little swirls on the cocoon instead of just like sliding past it so the person cannot grasp the energy, they can only feel it, that they can actually yeah, have little shapes which alter the energy around them. And um, this person's level is called the, the, the healer level or the scientist level because they can start experimenting with energy. So they have enough control over their own energy body to yeah, create variations in energy. It's not that something just is but they can alter how it is. So instead of, like for instance, a person on the first level, scout level, might have anger and they are completely at the mercy of their anger. A person who would be on the second level, they could change their anger, like, oh, okay, I want to express it in a physical way or I just want to express it in an emotional way or in a verbal way. Um, or I want it to simmer or I want it to be explosive or raging. Um, so it gives not mastery over the energy itself, but rather that the person can change the nuances of the energy. So it's a very limited control, there's a limited level of, okay, if this is the total range, you can go up and down by this much. So you can attune the energy a little bit this way and that. And this is actually the most common level of people to be at that they have um, a limited control. So for normal, relatively normal circumstances, normal cases, they can manage quite well. But in very extreme circumstances, they are in a way out of their depth and they uh, yeah, find themselves being unable to cope. 
which of course brings us to the third level. And the third level gives a very different experience. Um, so this is yeah, the person of action. So this is a person whose skill is great enough that they can make an energy a really a dominant energy. So they can repress other energies and stimulate uh, uh, their selective energies. So you could say, in, in, if you look at it, at it in naval terms, that the, uh, the scout is like a patrol boat or the destroyer or the minesweeper, just little ones scouting out the environment. Then you have the cruisers who have some stamina, which have some real impact, um, are usable for many different tasks. Those are the healer scientists. And then finally you have the battleship. And the battleship is in a way a power to be reckoned with. Like it can sink yeah, a fleet of cruisers because it can outgun them, and it has yeah, more armor. So you're relatively invulnerable to these yeah, lower forces, to these smaller people, unless they really gang up on you. Uh, but yeah, you're really a power to be reckoned with. You're relatively unstoppable for another yeah, person or, or a minor energy because there's a, a great amount of self-control, a good amount of self-discipline. Um, so you cannot be confused as easily. Um, of course there are levels because it's ultimately I'm now dividing it into categories but it's a sliding scale that you increase your control and ultimately you would call a person uh, yeah, a person of action if they can shift energy to yeah whatever their focus is for about half so if you can turn half of your energy into a healing energy or into a performance or into uh, a leadership effort or into an inspirational effort so then you can really create works which matter instead of just making little tweaks to other people's ideas. You can really have a very fundamental thought or a very fundamental creation, a very powerful influence, a really impact on your environment. But of course it's also a sacrifice because if you have to devote more than half of your energy to something that means all the other parts of your being will suffer. So you have a lot of power, but you have to sacrifice other parts of your being to be that powerful. Uh, but it's already a major achievement and there's not so many persons of action around. So if you are one, good on you. And make sure that you yeah, use it wisely. Uh, because power can also twist you if you focus on it too much or too long. And then that brings us to our final category and this is the person behind the screens and this is a person who has the uh, you could say the skill of the, um, the person of action so they can really control energies manipulate energies and rebalance energies but they no longer have to sacrifice their harmony to do so so, for the person of action to get something done, they need to push everything out of the way, both within themselves and outside of themselves, to get that thing to the foreground. Uh, because otherwise there's not enough energy, it's not stable enough, not strong enough. And the final level of control is that you don't work by force, as the yeah, person action does but you work more by skill so the amount of energy doesn't have to be that great as with the person of action but because the energy is very well attuned to their environment or very stable in itself or is actually self regenerating in itself it, you can get the same results as the person of action does but with a much smaller expenditure of force of energy 
So rather by doing things by violence, by brute force, you become able to do things in a very subtle manner, um, in a very, yeah, you could say modest manner, undisruptive manner. So these people are a lot harder to spot, a lot harder to um, to identify because in a way a person of action is easy to spot because they will have, yeah, you could say, um, in their structure, while the um, in their scientists will have small vortexes, small little irregularities on their cocoon, the yeah, a person of action will have huge irregularities where they can really transform. They will have these like, way, yeah, big energy transformers, like big roiling chambers of energy where the willpower acts upon the energy to transform it. Um, so they're very easy to um, to spot such a man of action. But what you find is that the um, person who has this mastery in a way starts to resemble once more um, the healer scientist. So rather than having these huge structures where they need to focus all their being on in this yeah, in way, great alchemical ovens they have in their, uh, in their cocoons, um, these people tend to have more um, smaller um, yeah, transformers which help them to control and to transform the energies around them. And because they're not focused on just one energy instead of having one or two great ovens, they tend to have lots of smaller ones. So the big difference in how you can spot from the cocoon the difference between a healer scientist and uh, a person behind the screens is that the healer scientist will have relatively few and far apart these little transformers, while the energy body of um, a person who's behind the screens will be yeah, very densely set with all these different mini transformers. So rather than by having these great big heavy industry ones like the person of action, they will have yeah, more like miniaturized versions of that and lots of them to do lots of parallel processing to work on lots of different levels of energy at the same time to coordinate things and also to create things which don't exist on only one level but are actually composed of energies on a lot of different levels. So this is a very rare type of energy body and it often indicates that the person has been actively working with energies for, uh, for several lifetimes already to have developed such a fine control. Um, Often it also goes hand in hand with a lot of, uh, of self-discipline um, because to attain such, uh, such mastery requires a lot of yeah, investment in this development. Um, so these are also you know, more external traits which could uh, give an indication that a person might have uh, such an ability um, and can work on such a, uh, a subtle level within uh, the task. So it, uh, it shows a big karmatic investment that people have made in um, how they are um, able to, uh, to perform their works. Um, also a person with that level has of course relatively high standards to uh, live up to, not to uh, fall within the karmatic uh, ladder which he has uh, attained. And often a person who has attained such a level of mastery will tend to work together with yeah, um, other people who also have a, uh, a very masterful skill or higher beings like uh, spirit guides, power animals, um, uh, uh, saintly beings, uh, uh, gods and goddesses um, to not to lose their, yeah, their skill in a way because they need a very high level of tutor. Um, you can't learn this skill by simply taking a class and uh, listening to the teacher, because these very subtle, yeah, almost philosophical differences in how you do things in the best way possible 
um, you really need a master or a higher being to uh, to teach you, to tutor you, to help you to reach that level and help you to maintain such a level. Um, so if you don't have that, um, a lot of yeah, work can of course be done in your dreams by also working with your higher self as it is possible in your dreams. So yes, these are you know, in a way the ladder of evolution you can uh, have in developing your uh, cocoon. Um, I hope this uh, gives you some more insight in, your, uh, in yourself and in your fellow beings.